In this video, we're going to focus on how we can get the data on click here. So if I click on one of these elements, what will happen in the console log? We get the data set index number and the data point index number. And that can be very useful for very advanced items. So let's start to look how we can do this in React Chart for Chart.js. So let's start to create the on click on a line chart with React Chart. So the first thing that we need to do here is to start working with this item here and start to draw the line chart. So what I'm going to do here is quite simple. I'm just going to say import, and we're going to import here basically the line, which will be eventually our line tag. And then we say here from, and what exactly, it's a string value of react chart JS number two component. So we want to make sure we have that component ready. So once we did that, what we want to do next is to import, and our import now will add up certain uh, components or objects, and the one will be first of all chart as chart JS comma. Then what I want to do here is I need the line element. So these are just basically what they say in chart JS tree shakeable, meaning that you can add up individual elements. So I'm going to say here the category uh, category style a scale, sorry, not the style, it's a scale, and this is basically for the x-axis. So then we have another one here, it's the linear scale, and the linear scale is for the y-axis, and then we have that one, we have the point element, because we want to have not only the line, but we also want to have the circular dot for every point. Then the tooltip, and finally here the legend, and we're going to say here from chart.js. So basically we want to get it from the chart.js. So that's the first one, semicolon here. Then what I want to do is I want to register these. So I'm going to say here chart.j or js.register. And then here, we're just going to grab all of the items above here that we have. We just say add those up all together. Once we did that, what I want to do here, semicolon that's fine so now we have all of this and of course if I save this nothing happens yet so now what we need to do is to draw the item but what I will do is I put it in a diff I want to put it in a diff here so we have this diff and within this diff we're going to put in basically the line item I'm going to hit the line tag with capital L and the reason why line here is basically because of this here we import it as the line so whatever this has as a name, that would eventually impact here, the tag name. So now we have this. And what I want to do in here, in the line object, is to put in certain items. So here, what I'm going to do is, we're going to say the data object will be equal to data. And this is just a constant, but we have to assign it yet. So far, it's not assigned. The next thing what I want to do here is the options. And the options will be equal this. There's a here options, and I think that should be more than enough for now. So if I save this, we get an error here. And the reason why we get the error is the data and the options are, of course, not defined. So let's start to define these. I'm going to say here, enter, enter. And we're going to put in here the following information. We're going to say here, um, constant data. And this constant data will be equal to, and this is just basic items that I covered in my videos quite often, we have the content blocks. So we have here the data block. So we're going to say here the labels, and we can make this very simple. I'm going to say here, Monday, Tuesday, and of course not a string, Wednesday. And that should be more than enough for this example. Then we have here the data sets. And the data sets is an array, and in that array we have the brackets. So what I'm going to say here, the label, and the label here without the S because this is for the legend. So I can say here, uh, 369, I guess that should be nice. 369 uh, symbols or numbers, comma. And then what I want to here is I want to say here the data. And the data is an array of values and which I make very appropriately 3, 6, and 9. And then let's make this one 3.69. Once we have this, comma, what I want to do here is we can say here the border color. And the border color here can be black, that should be more than enough. And then we're going to say here the point background 
color and this color can be uh, aqua or something like that marine doesn't matter so then we have that then of course I want a tension line so the line is a bit more elastic 0 0.4 if I save this it's still not done yet although we are done halfway as you can see here now the options has not been defined so we're going to define the options here next so this should have a semicolon and then we're going to say a constant options and the options will be equal to this object here and what we can say here is a few things uh, although I think we can even leave it blank if I leave it blank we should have a chart already absolutely phenomenal it draws already this nice chart here all right so you can see here this color and this color here is not being filled up so we can do that by giving it a background color I guess let's say yeah background color aqua save that um, make sure you have a comma here or else you get this error aqua there we are all right so we have this here beautiful of course the back background color doesn't fill up here because we need to do a fill active and we need to have the fill component but I will skip that for now so we have these options here but what we want to do of course was to click so what I need to do here is some tiny adjustments so what I need to do here is first of all we're going to put in another one we're going to say the on click effect will be equal to object of on click with capital C so I'm going to grab that one and I'm going to say here constant on click equals and then in here we can start to do something and I guess this should not even be uh, query braces yet this should be an event because what we want to do is we want to trigger the event and if we trigger this event this is basically a callback functionality we want to do something in this case we want to have the reference because it needs to understand if we click on the chart that this is the chart we're clicking on because right now if I just do a console log here there should be probably nothing working yet let's see if it works I click all right it does work so all right this is my bad but what I need to know eventually is if I click on this point it should be more specific so what I need to do is I need to use the use ref item here and what I want to do is I want to make this a ref so I say ref and this ref will be equal to chart ref so I'm going to say a chart ref and this chart ref we have to define here well, let's do it here Bob so I say constant chart ref will be equal to the use ref and this what it does is basically reference is on wherever we click on that is the reference here however if I save this we're not done yet because we get an error here use ref is not defined it is defined but uh, what we're missing here because this is like a functionality we need to import this functionality here so I'm going to do here import and then we're going to say here use ref so that's the one we need to import not the chart ref the chart ref is just a name we gave it ourselves but the official or origin is the use ref all right so we have the use ref and I'm going to say that from react that's it because this is an official react functionality so now if I click on this we should have something at least we don't get errors anymore but we're not done here yet so let's scroll down here because we get this event it triggers the event but now what I want to do now is I want to grab this chart ref and let's put that in here now instead save that refresh and now if I click you can see here it grabs the chart this is very important grabs the current position of the chart so what are we clicking on the chart objects basically so it grabs that information this information is important because now we can uh, track for example the the uh, index which index are we clicking on so let's start to work on that so I'm going to say a console log and I'm going to use a built-in charges functionality which is get elements at event so this functionality is basically says get the element at the event and the event in this case is this event which is a click on click event so on the event of click we want to get an element and more specifically we want to get the element we're clicking on here that's very important so let's start to get that so what you're going to say here chart ref dot current so basically we're saying all right we're going to get the element of the event of whatever chart we're clicking on the current details and then we can say here comma the event so it will get us or grab all the information and this event is rel relative here 
So this is very important. So if I save this, refresh. All right, interesting, we get here. Get elements at event is not defined. And the reason why this is not defined, this is very important. I need to grab this and we need to put this probably here above. So I'm going to scroll up here. We can say here with a line and I guess this is a built-in React Chart.js function as well. So that's why you have put it in here. And then if I save this, we should have now a working model. There we are. As you can see here, if I click on the white space, look what's happened. There is no array. Length of zero, which is correct. Why is length of zero? Because we're not clicking on an element. What are we clicking on? It's on the canvas itself or in the chart area, but not on the element. So get the element, or let's see here what's, what's the term, get element at the event. So what is the element? The element is basically these dots. Then when I click on that, I, on the event of click, we, and we click on the element, which is the circle, we get details. And what are the details here? Let's open up here. You can see a data set zero and index number one, which is correct because this index zero, index one and index two. All right, I want, I want to do now, I want to extract those data because that data can be useful for future projects. So I'm just going to show you how we can extract them. So we have this here and what I want to do is I want to get the data set, index number and the index. So we can see here, this is already zero. So basically, if I just copy this entire line here, put that in here, and just say here index zero, we're going one level deeper already. So if I click on this, there we are. So we're going to get the point element. And now I can just grab this data set here. So let's say dot data set. If I click on this, refresh, you should see here now, we just get the zero on number 46 and 46, that is correct. If I comment out these two, save, refresh. There we are, zero, zero, zero. Why zero? We only have one data set and that's index zero. So what I can do here now is, I say here, constant, and this is the data set index, and I cannot give it the exact name, so I'm going to say data set index number, all right? So I'm just going to give another name than data set index because it's already a reference to data set index. If we do this, we'll get an error if I use the same term here. So I'll just give something else. So this is a slightly a variation. So then what I want to do is exactly the same here, constant, but now I want the data point, basically the index of the data point. How do we get there? Well, we have here, I guess, this item, but instead of data set index, I can just put in this here and just say your index. All right, remember we had the one was data set index and the other was the index itself. So now we have both of those. Of course, if I save this, there is no console log for this. So I need to create a console log. And this console log uh, should get the data here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say backtick, backtick. I'm going to do an ES6 uh, concatenation. And then I'm going to say here, uh, the data set index is, and then we say here, dollar sign, query braces, index number. And then we say, and dp, the data point, equals dollar sign, curly braces, and then within here, oh, data point. There you are. Save, refresh. If I click on this, look at that. All right, so you can see here now, we get the details, but we get an error as well. So why do we get this error? Let me explain. Because if we click on this, we get this information here, which is an index number. But if we click on the white space, that index number does not exist. So what I'm going to do here now is create an if statement to avoid the mistake on this. So I'm going to say if, and we're just going to grab this here. We're going to grab from this to that. And then, and then let me just do it like that. All right, slightly smaller, sorry. Then I'm going to say here, if this um, dot length, is larger than zero. So there should be at least something than zero. If that is the case, what I want to do is then, then to show the console log and do the calculation here. So let's refresh, press, press, press. All right, you see nothing works. But if I press on this, it does show here nicely the values, index number zero, and then data point number two, this is data point one and data point zero. 
And this is one of the ways how we can use on click on a chart with these data points here or these elements.